welcome to smart catalyst feb 1st 2019 so today we are going to see all these articles the first one is unemployment data based on draft report the second one is home ministry justifies excluding the sri lankan refugees from the citizenship bill the third one is center firm on fdi rules deadline and the fourth one is rbi lifts the curb on three public sector banks and the fifth one is consumer price index for industrial workers and the sixth one is new optic normal and the seventh one is core industry growth hits 18 month low and the last one is india must sign nuclear non-proliferation treaty to gain entry into the nsg said by China. So the first one is unemployment data based on the draft report. So what the news here is the NSSO report which is citing high unemployment rate in 2017 is not verified and it is just a draft report and it is not a verified report it is said by Niti Ayo. So first we have to know what this NSSO report. So NSSO is used to release a periodic labor force survey and in that survey it stated like India's unemployment rate is hitting a very high of 6.1 percentage in 2017. So if you compare this unemployment rate with the 2011-12 rate, during 2011-12 the unemployment rate stood at only 2.2 percentage but now it escalated to 6.1% in 2017 and also the same report suggests that there is a huge joblessness which is prevailing in our Indian economy and it is especially high in urban India of 7.8% than in rural India which is 5.3%. And apart from that, the LFPR, which is the labor force participation rate, it is also declined from 39% to 36%. So what is this LFPR means? It is the labor force participation rate, which indicates that the number of people who are seeking jobs, so who are searching jobs, who are uh, ready to take any jobs. So this is also now declining. So it indicates that as unemployment is also rising, but LFPR is also decreasing. So it shows that the people are simply giving up on finding jobs and stopped seeking working. So it is a major concern because the informal sector, which is a huge employer, which employs more than 90% of our country's workforce, it has also witnessed a decline in the available work and wages in the last two years. So these are all indicated in the NSSO report. But this NSSO report is not verified. It is simply a draft report. It is said as a counter by Niti Ayo. So what are the concerns regarding this report means? The government's failure to release the NSSO report last year shows a sign of complete lack of transparency regarding the jobs data prevailing in our country. So as there was no NSSO periodic report last year, the government kept citing the job numbers based on EPFO's payroll data as well as mudra loans and it is not that much certain so it create an atmosphere of uncertainty and confusion. So these are certain concerns which is indicated in the news articles. The second article is Home Ministry justifies excluding the Sri Lankan refugees from the citizenship bill. So this article talks about the Ministry of Home Affairs which recently justified the exclusion of Sri Lankan's Tamil refugees most of whom are currently living in Tamil Nadu from the ambit of contentious citizenship bill 2016. So if you see the provisions of citizenship bill 2016 it is majorly aiming to provide citizenship to non-Muslims from three countries Bangladesh, Pakistan and Afghanistan who came to India on or before December 31st 2014. So why they are actually providing this citizenship to non-Muslims means because they have suffered a huge religious persecution in those countries. So in order to protect them only, now the government is aiming to provide citizenship to non-Muslims from Bangladesh, Pakistan and Afghanistan. So the another provision of the citizenship bill is it seeks to reduce the number of continuous years of stay in India from 11 years to 6 years for those illegal immigrants in order to obtain the citizenship by naturalization. So we have to know first who is an illegal immigrant according to our country's provision. A person who enters India without a valid passport or with forged documents and a person who stays in the country beyond the valid visa permit. So these persons are usually considered as illegal immigrant according to our country's provisions. So apart from these illegal immigrants, the other persons who are having a valid documents and valid passport, now they can obtain the citizenship by naturalization according to the Citizenship Bill 2016. But what is a major concern over here is it actually nullifies the NRC, which is the National Register of Citizens, which is updated in Assam. 
So what is this NRC means? We all knew that it is recently updated in Assam to detect the illegal Bangladeshi immigrants who entered into the state after March 24, 1971, which is the date fixed according to the Assam Accord of 1985. But this updation of NRC is irrespective of their religion. But if you see in this citizenship bill, it is based on the religion. So it is only for non-Muslims. It is not including the Muslims. So it is irrespective of their religion. So if suppose this citizenship bill 2016 becomes an act, the non-Muslims who found to have entered into Assam need not go through any deportation process. Thereby it actually nullifies the NRC process as a whole. But what the news here is, the citizenship amendment bill provides a citizenship only for the people who are coming from Afghanistan, Bangladesh and Pakistan and not for similar immigrants. For example, say the Sri Lankan Tamil refugees. So they are not coming under the ambit of the citizenship bill. But the Ministry of Home Affairs is actually justifying this exclusion, stating that the refugees from Sri Lanka and Myanmar among the others were eligible for long-term visas. So instead of giving them the citizenship bill, we are providing them long-term visa so that they can enjoy the facilities like employment in the private sector and undertaking studies in any academic institution. But what a major checkpoint here is the long-term visa is applicable or available to any person if they prove that they have been the victims of oppression in their countries of origin on account of race, religion, sex, nationality or ethnic identity or he or she is a member of particular social group or political opinion. So it is also stated by the Ministry of Home Affairs. The next article is Centre Firm on FDA Rules Deadline. So what the news here is, the government said it would be extending the deadline for the implementation of new rules governing the FDA in e-commerce. So what the background is, the government is recently came up with a new set of rules for FDA. And this new rule should be implemented or adopted by all the enterprises, including the e-commerce. But now the government is extending the deadline for the e-commerce alone. Why? Because the large e-commerce firms such as the Amazon and the Flipkart repeatedly approach the center for either dil dilution of the new rules or extension of the deadline. Why? Because they want to minimize the impact on their normal sales as well as the customers as well as the sellers. So first we have to understand one thing that this new FDA rules brought by the government it is not actually allowing the FDI in inventory based model. So before understanding this we have to understand what this inventory based model and all. So there are two e-commerce model which is followed in our country. So what are those two e-commerce model mean one is marketplace and another one is inventory so India allows 100% FDI in marketplace but it is not allow any kind of FDI in inventory model so marketplace refers to any tech platform like the Amazon or the Flipkart that connects the buyers and the sellers so it is a tech platform which connects buyers and sellers and here we allow 100% FDI but if it is an inventory based model here goods and services owned by an e-commerce firms like the Amazon or Flipkart that sells directly to the retail customers so they have their own inventory for example Amazon or Flipkart having their own inventory and they have their own products there and they sell directly on their e-commerce website to the retail consumers okay so this is inventory based model and here we usually don't allow the FDI so why they are actually allowing marketplace and restricting the inventory based model alone means in order to protect the India's vast unorganized retail sector which is doesn't have enough ability or capacity to purchase at scale and offer big discounts so if you see our local unorganized retail sectors they are not having that much money to invest and they are not able to offer big discount like the Amazon or Flipkart so in order to enable level playing field only the government is putting restrictions over the inventory based model so if suppose Amazon or Flipkart is coming to India they can only operate the marketplace model in India and not the inventory based model so if you see the practical situation these companies are operating in marketplace model only in India but still they are preferring or putting their own companies in an advantageous position than the other non-organized or unorganized retail sector thereby it actually not ensuring a level playing field which means it actually provide more benefits to its own company so in order to curb that only now the government is putting some ban on any firm 
that has any stake owned by the same e-commerce company from selling on the platform. So if suppose Amazon is having a stake in any other firm X, so it should not display the items or the products of that company in its website or e-commerce website. So it is first thing and second one is no company that has 25% or more of its purchase from an e-commerce group firm may sell on that firm's platform. So if in reverse case, that is if this company is having 25% um, or more of its purchase from the e-commerce group, then it is also not allowing to sell its product on the same platform. Okay, So it all aims to ensure a level playing field and ensure lasting gains for both the buyers as well as the sellers. The next article is RBI lifts the curb on three public sector banks. So what the news here is the RBI has decided to allow three public sector banks out of the PCA framework. So nearly 11 public sector banks are under the ambit of this PCA. So if any banks or institution is coming under the ambit of this prompt corrective action, then the bank's lending activity is curbed or restricted by the government or by the RBI. So lending activity is actually restricted and the expansion of branches is also restricted. If suppose that bank is coming under the ambit of this prompt corrective action. So from that now the three banks which are the Bank of India, Bank of Maharashtra and Oriental Bank of Commerce are coming out of this PCA ambit but still another eight public sector banks which are still facing some restrictions under this PCA. So why the RBI has decided to take these three banks out of the PCA means because after the capital infusion by the government, the financial health of these three banks are now getting better. So in order to continue its lending activity and in order to inject more liquidity as well as making our economy prosperous, now they just trying to bring these three banks out of the PCA ambit. So the PCA matrix has three parameters. One is the asset quality, second one is the profitability return on assets and third one is the leverage ratio. So if you see for each, there are three risk thresholds which are one, two and three. If you see in the risk threshold one, it is putting restrictions on the bank's dividend distribution of profits. But if it goes to risk threshold two, then it, in addition to that, it put restrictions on the branch expansion or overseas expansion. And if it goes to risk threshold three, it even put restrictions on management compensation as well as the top level officials or the director's fee. That is a cut in their salary, so reduction in their remuneration and all. So this article talks about the consumer price index for the industrial workers. So what the news here is the consumer price index for the industrial workers is recently released by the CSO. So in that context, we have to know about this CPI and inflation. So inflation can be measured at three levels. One is the producer, second one is the wholesaler and the last one is the retailer or the consumers. So what is inflation means? It is a rise in prices of goods and services at a consistent level for a very long period of time. So this is what inflation means and it is usually measured at three levels, the producer, wholesaler and the consumer. So prices generally rise in each level till the commodity finally reaches the hands of the consumers that is V. So the CPI is based on the final prices of goods at the retail level or the products that we are purchasing at the shops right. So at that level if we measure then it is known as the consumer price index. So why we are having this four CPI means because of the wide disparities in the consumption baskets for different segments of the consumers. So there are a lot of wide variety of consumers who are consuming. So the consumption baskets are different for each and every consumer. So that is why we are having or adopted this four CPIs. One is the industrial workers, their basket is different. And second one is the urban non-manual employees. And the third one is agricultural labors and the last one is the rural workers. So in India, RBI uses CPI combined which is released by the Central Statistics Office under MOSPI for the inflation purpose and it is having its base year as 2012. So the number of items in the CPI basket include 448 in rural and 460 in urban. So this article talks about the new Arctic normal which is bringing record low temperatures across much of the US Midwest as well as parts of the country's Northeast and it actually kills 12 people. So now we have to understand what this polar vortex means. So if you see this polar vortex is usually formed at two regions, one is the North Pole and another one is the South Pole. So here this event that is the record low temperature 
across much of the US, Midwest and parts of the Northeast is due to the North Pole polar vortex. So what is this polar vortex means? Each year a pocket of frigid air which is a very cold air is formed over the Arctic region and, and it usually stays north of the US but during the winter season some of it has broken off and it forms into child vortex. So these child vortex is broken off and it is traveling south where it will hit hardest the midwest as well as the us okay so northeast of the us region so why this occurs means the global temperature has risen by 0 0.8 degree celsius since 1880 so this rise in the global temperature is actually influencing this polar vortex so the usually low pressure polar vortex so usually air flows from high pressure region to low pressure region so at low pressure region air converges but in this scenario at the polar vortex because of the global warming the low temperature at the polar vortex is now getting weakening so now the jet stream which surrounds that polar vortex is also getting or it is also meandering which paving the way for the expansion of this low pressure region which is also spreading to the southern part which in turn affects the or which in turn brought the record low temperature across the US. Okay. So this Arctic region is now warmed over twice the average and the temperature difference between the North Pole and the North American region is also now getting reduced. So the energy generated by the jet stream which travels upward and disrupts the polar vortex causing it to split. So one of these two child vortices has visited the North America this week which causing this record low temperature. So the next article is core industry growth hits 18 month low. So what the news here is the India's core industrial sectors expanded at 2.6 percentage recording its slowest growth in last 18 months. So why this much slowest growth means because of the fall in the output of crude oil, refinery products and the fertilizers. So it is this index of industrial production is usually compiled and published by CSO under MOSP and it is published every month to know about the industrial activities and its functioning so the base year which is taken by the CSO is 2011-12 and it covers 865 items which is comprising of three broad categories one is the manufacturing which is 77 percentage and the second one is the mining which contributes 14 percentage and third one is the electricity which contributes nearly 8 percentage so if you see in this picture it is these are the eight core industries which is taken uh, taken into account for the calculation of IIP. So this article talks about that India must sign nuclear non-proliferation treaty to gain entry into the nuclear suppliers group. It is said by China. So what the news here is, China has been consistently opposing India's entry into the nuclear suppliers group, stating that India should first sign the NPT, which is the nuclear non-proliferation treaty, in order to get into the NSG. So in this context, we have to know about this nuclear suppliers group. So it is a 48 nation grouping which controls the nuclear related exports among the countries and it was set up in 1974 to counter India's nuclear test which we had conducted in 1974. So since 2008 India has sought for this NSG membership but it is consistently denied by China's opposition and also China has asked the NSG countries to adopt a criteria based approach which essentially means that either both India and Pakistan together can get into this NSG group or none. So this is what China's standpoint. So apart from that, we have to know about this MTCR, which is the Missile Technology Control Regime. It has 34 nations grouping, which controls the exports of missile technology, including the drones. And it was set up in the year 1987. And India has become a member of MTCR in 2016.